if it really isn't a good time, the response to that isn't, okay, great, when would you like me to come back? Mm -hmm. Because if you're always available, then they're going to wait till they actually feel good, right? That they have their house clean, that they're ready for guests, a whole list of things. And the reality is it's not going to happen ever, right? So when you allow them to schedule the appointment, it turns into a disappointment Mm -hmm. every single time. Welcome back to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. It is Zach and I rocking it out. Hey, yes, Zach. Hey, Good how to you see doing, you, buddy? buddy. Good. Knuckles? <laughs> Let's yep. do Knuckles. Um, dude, it's Christmas is in the air. I smell I smell holidays all over you. It's uh it's it smells like eggnog and joy. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> do you do you drink eggnog? <laughs> dude, I'm an I'm an eggnog fiend. I bet you are. <laughs> I love I love me some eggnog. I put it in my coffee. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love a good eggnog. What about you? You eggnog man? I don't mind it, but to be honest, I don't. I, I can't remember the last time I've drank eggnog. Yeah, there's. You, you're either there are two kinds of people in the world. There are those who love eggnog and uh, those who listen to Barry Manilow, and mm-hmm. that's it. That's what it comes down to. Uh, we're gonna get rolling here, Zach. We are continuing our conversation about objections and rebuttals, and uh, today's topic is sometimes people will say now is not a good time. It's not a good time. Like it's you came really by, not. you called. We're, matter of fact, we're not even having a good time right now. No, it's, it's <laughs> I'm, I'm actually getting ready to leave. So we need, so we need to get that's this That's right. We're going to wrap this up. <laughs> no, uh, but sometimes we'll call a client. Uh, we'll knock on the door. We'll connect with them and they'll say, oh man, it's, it's just not a good time. And, uh, this is a tricky one because it can be, it can be because it could be real or it could be a smoke screen. And to be honest, I, I, I was talking to Adam right before we started this, this. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That guy. Cool. Um, and, and the, the interesting thing is, is a lot of these, this series, which I love it and it's unique. And this is what everybody needs to hear. Cause this is the truth. This but is the guts. This is the guts, right? <laughs> this is the truth. And, This series, a lot of the answers end up being the same. And that's the whole idea. I know, that's the, yes. Is, it's the smoke screens. Mm -hmm. It's, if you, if you're clicking on this thing and it's a completely new answer that's irrelevant to the last episode or the last podcast, then this is for you because it Mm -hmm. is, it is so different. But, um, the, the goal in every single one of these and, and just to continue to, and this this series all together will help train our people, will help train you guys out there to really understand what is behind all of this. Um, but I love this one. Now is not a good time. I, I have gotten this a lot personally, and this is one that you can actually have fun with. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about that goal. I, I like that you started there. So, um, again, I do think that people... They're they're in their sales approach, getting to the door, starting the conversation. Many times, especially new agents, they're thinking, I've got to get a sale. Mm -hmm. I have to get a sale because my mortgage needs paid, my rent needs paid, my car payment needs paid. Put the Christmas presents on a credit card. Yeah, yeah. So I've got to take care of all that stuff. So my number one goal is to sell a policy. Mm -hmm. And you, you can smell that on somebody. It's like a bad cologne, yeah. you know? It doesn't smell like eggnog. No. I hope. That ain't eggnog. <laughs> it ain't cinnamon. It ain't fresh baked cookies. No. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, what, the what smell it? of desperation. Yeah. Desperation. Yeah. And uh, regret. 100%. 100. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever have that feeling when you were going out? Like, did was it like, man, I got to get this figured out? Desperation? Mm-hmm. Yes. Commission breath? I think it's normal. I think we've all had that feeling. Yeah. It's, do you let it show? Yeah. Or do you understand? I was scared to death to have the commission breath. Even though when I was desperate, I had to, I had to check myself. Okay. And I know this isn't part of the podcast, but personally. Say say check yourself. I had to check myself, man. Before. Before. 
I wrecked myself. I wrecked myself. That's right. No, <laughs> had but I, to. Actually, I had no choice. I, I had to. And the whole, th- whole part of that is um, going out there because you almost cannot be brand new in this and not have pressure. Hmm. And pressure when it comes to related to time, when it comes to performance, when it comes to money, when it comes to belief, when it comes yeah. to hope, when it comes to family support, typically you, you're leaving <laughs> yes. some sort of opportunity guaranteed ish guaranteed doesn't mean it's great but some sort of guarantee or stability or comfort zone into something new and all of those factors rolled in together typically will create uh pressure now pressure is related to time because you can have pressure and you can deal with pressure because you have some sort of lumped up savings some sort of grace from your spouse some sort of um, expectation of I'm learning, I'm new, I have time to figure this out. But then that allows the anxiety to kick in. It allows um, your fear, um, your paralysis to take over. And all of a sudden you waste that time for a period of weeks until You're back you have school. no more time and you have pressure. When those mm-hmm. two are combined that creates the worst possible situation for you to actually go out there and perform because no longer do you have the opportunity and the privilege to falling on your face and failing and figuring it out. You have to perform right now. It's do or die or you're out of the business next week. Yeah, that's very, that's a very hard position to be in. It's impossible. And it's very, it's, I don't know if it's impossible, but it's pretty darn close. It's very, very close. And uh, you, you, we have to be honest with ourselves and, and tell ourselves the truth of saying, man, I put myself in this position. And if you are there, I mean, you have to find some creative solutions to be able to finance this, to get back into it mm-hmm. and have your head on straight. But let's talk about that goal because the goal here, um, removing the commission breath, it's very simple. It's if you're at the door... <laughs> <laughs> I don't, that was there. And there we go. Thank you, Adam. Um, the goal is if you're at the door is to continue the conversation, whether it's on the porch or in the home. Mm-hmm. That's it. If you're on the phone, it's to continue the conversation. Mm-hmm. That's that's all. Because yep. if you can do that, then you can move to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. But yep. that should alleviate all the pressure. And this is, I mean, just a mind hack. I mean, if you have to, and you're in a position where you are feeling a lot of pressure, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself, you almost have to either have a box by the door of your house or a box in your car where you mentally dump all that stuff. I promise you it will be there when you get back. Yeah. One thing I always had to tell myself is, and in, not in tell, tell agents that struggle through this, one of my biggest advice for them was, hey, relax. Okay, at the end of the day, you have clothes on your back, you have food to eat, you may have some sort of money or access to money to get you through today, right? Um, you have somewhere to go lay your head on the pillow tonight, you have your health, you have an opportunity, you're very blessed, you're very grateful, and count your blessings, look at everything you have. Now, don't worry about trying to make $5,000 today, or a whole month's worth of salary or make a, a, or funds today. Let's identify what is a win today. What, what would be considered a win? And number one, have fun. Number two, help a family, create a new friend, yeah. develop a relationship. And those points, just like you said, when you said, well, let's do the steps, mm-hmm. is be able to identify and separate your cell into segments. Like number one, let's find the home. Let's dial the phone number. Very simple. That's our only goal. Yes. Nothing more, nothing less, right? Little That's win. It. That's it. Mm-hmm. The second one is to be able to introduce yourself and be able to get the sit or call, make the phone call and be able to get past the first two seconds where you're identifying who you are, right? Yes. Uh, that is the next one. You know, the third one would be, again, let's develop a relationship. Let's do, let's build some trust. Let's, let's have some connection. Let's let them know that I'm a real person Mm -hmm. because we know if we skip ahead, if we skip any of these, it's going to all come crash and burn. So let's get a little win there. And at the end of the day, and, and we had our our life insurance Academy coaching call and we had an agent ask a question that was very similar because they've been starting to listen to the series, which was really cool. Um, and they had a question, um, about an objection that they received. 
And this is a live interactive coaching call that we do on Thursdays at 1030. You all should join. Um, and in that, it was all about there, there was a piece missing and we, we were able to identify exactly by following the steps that we've outlined in this series um, of what the real reason was. And the actual agent is the one that told me what the real reason was That's after great. we talked through it together. Um, so it does work. It's really cool. But they realized that they were pushing through the, the steps or pushing, having a more of an end goal in mind the entire time instead of separating them out. Yes. And hey, beyond a doubt, let me establish this first and then let me move to that. Then let me move to that. Um, and then when you do that, you're able to identify on areas of improvement you know, that you can Love focus it. on. The other thing, um, I know we got to jump into this, but I will say that I appreciate what you said. You know, you said at the end of the day, we have a close, we have this, we mm -hmm. have that. Uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, he's got Parkinson's. Um, I had read a quote from him that said, um, gratitude makes optimism possible. I butchered that quote, but I really, really like it because if you're focused on the negative and you're feeling that tense pressure, you can't even hope. You can't even move forward. It's mm -hmm. difficult. It's very challenging to move forward. So if you can do what you said and say, man, you know what? Today's a day. It's an opportunity. I'm blessed. Then you then you can. How many people you can you hope. serve? How many mm -hmm. people can you help? Yeah. I don't want you to sell a policy. I don't even want you to try. I don't care if you get a, an app or a premium. I, I don't want you to. That sounds I don't want crazy to, to people, dude. I just want just you, so you know. I just want you to make a friend, <laughs> yes. help a family, educate mm -hmm. them, help them realize all the areas they're vulnerable that they may not be aware of and be able to possibly based upon your experience and you're the professional, um, advise, you know, what you would do if, if they were your family member. Right. And that's, that's it. The rest mm -hmm. is going to unfold itself. Yeah. You know, that's good. Just go out there and give free advice. Pretend you're volunteering. But every single one of them said it's not a good time. Every one of them. I mean, it's probably not, you know. Um, I, lo I love this objection because this one's funny to me. And the reason it's funny to me is agents hear this all the time. Oh, now's not a good time. And, and, and when, I, when agents tell me this, I'm like, really? Why was it not a good time? You know? And they're like, well, I mean, they, you know, I don't really know. They said they had stuff to do mm -hmm. and, you know. They were busy. They were busy. I was like, okay. I was like, she, you know, typically the final expense market, you're typically on Social Security. You're typically on disability. You have limited mm -hmm. income. For the most part, they're probably not working anymore. For the most part. For the most part. Mm -hmm. um, they love their family dearly, uh, but they're also more guarded because this market is getting hit with a lot of stuff, especially in, in the Medicare season, mm -hmm. just all kinds of stuff. And a lot of it's confusing and nobody's taking the time to explain anything to them. Um, but more importantly, they typically don't leave the house that much. They're lower income. They can't just go on vacations every week. Um, they're, they're, they're typically not busy at all. And you can tell, like if you're, if you're out door knocking, you know, like they're typically still in their jammies or their loungewear mm -hmm. or they're just kind of relaxing and they, you know, now's not a good time. <laughs> yes. And then you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Well, you know, is, is, you know, and there are other iterations of this. Yeah. So it may not just be not a good time. Um, the other one would be, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling well. Right. Yes. Yeah. Of course you're not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Of course you're not. Yes. Uh -huh. This, this, this market in, and we talk about this all the time. We want to bring dignity back to these people, right? Correct. We want to serve. Mm -hmm. They want to help them. I love, this is my favorite market. Mm -hmm. I love these people. Of course, they're not going to feel good. They, they're they struggling. They're in a situation. They don't have anybody to help them. They're typically helping raise grandkids. They're or 27 medications. They're, yeah, they have right. a suitcase full of pills. Like, they don't mm -hmm. feel good. You know, sometimes their house or home, their living environment isn't ideal. They're not probably not happy about that. Right. It's probably not is in the shape that they wish it to be or they hoped it would be. Um, it's not like they have the funds or the resources to be able to have the most extravagant food and meals brought into them and freshly prepared that's healthy. It's just a lot of stress. It's a lifelong of stress and hard work. Their body's breaking down. They're on a bunch of medications. They don't have the help that they need, and that's where we come in to help. Of course they don't feel good. Right, yes. 
So right. not a good time, not feeling good. Um, so let me clarify for, for our audience. It sounds like you're saying that more than likely they're home. Yeah. In most cases. I can almost guarantee it. More than likely they're not feeling great. They're never going to feel cases. great. And uh, now this may not be true for mortgage protection. We can talk about that in just a moment, but we'll stick on this this track for final expense. When you come, I'll, I'll talk about the phone. Mm-hmm. And I want you to talk about this part about it okay. as far as like the door. When you're you're experiencing that, I'm guessing you're just taking an appointment and, and moving on. Right. And then and coming back and they're not answering. Yeah, no, that's not <laughs> what I'm doing at all. Um, so th- the number one thing is, mm-hmm. is it real or not? How do you know as an agent is, is it really not a good time or they're just giving you a smoke screen and because they don't know you yet, they're unsure of why you're here, they have their guard up and no matter who you are, if you're giving away a million dollar check, is it still not a good time? Right? How do you know the difference? Uh, for one is use your context clues, right? For one, yeah, every now and then it's very rare, but I could be coming up to the home, knocking on the door. The lady already has her coat on, her car's running in mm-hmm. the driveway. She's grabbing her keys and she goes, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It's, it's now it's not a good time. I have to pick up my grandson from school and I know it's right at about school time, you know, and I understand that. Um, that could be one thing. The other one could be grandparents, which is happens a lot. They are watching multiple grandkids and yes. you can tell that it's way, she doesn't have nearly the help Capacity. that they deserve. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that could indicate something that's truly not a good time. If they are physically sick, like really sick, um, and you should be able to tell the difference of not feeling good and, and, and groggy versus like, I'm like puking. I'm like really sick. Right. Um, yeah, that probably wouldn't be a good time. Um, so that's how I identify if it is a good time or if it's not a good time. Um, but the other part is, is I'm a professional. My job's to get this information to them. I have to know that first and foremost. So I have to be persistent in a gentle, nice way in order to do that. Um, so by doing that, my number one goal here is... I'm the one that they're almost missing out on. Hmm. And, and I'm not saying that in like a I'm important type of way, but you have to make them feel. I mean, you do have a podcast. For a, crying well, out loud. will you allow me to be here? I really appreciate it. <laughs> and you still cash my checks That's that right. I send you for allowing me to be on the show. <laughs> yes. no. uh, but like you can't just be the response to that. If it really isn't a good time, the response to that isn't, okay, great. When would you like me to come back? Mm-hmm. Because if you're always available, then they're going to wait till they actually feel good, right? That they have their house clean, that they're ready for guests, that um, a whole Mm. list of things. And the reality is it's not going to happen, okay? Ever. Ever, right? So when you allow them to schedule the appointment, it turns into a disappointment Mm -hmm. every single time. Now, what happens if they don't feel good? And they call the doctor, right? They want to get an appointment. And the lady on the phone says, oh, yes, you can definitely come in here to see Dr. Ball, right? Uh, But Dr. Ball has an appointment. Uh, He has an availability Tuesday at 1215, and he also has one at uh, 430. Um, Or you could wait till next Thursday on whatever date it is. He'll have one at 9 a.m. Which one works best for you? What do you think Miss Jones is going to do? She's going to pick one of those available. That's right. Now, the reality is Mr. Ball may be golfing. He may only take two appointments each day, and he golfs all the other time. Mm -hmm. But you never know that. It doesn't matter. So I want to create that importance. I want to create that availability. um, But I want to make it feel like, hey, you've already missed your opportunity for these state-regulated final expense programs, but I may make an exception to see if I can now fit you in for my second attempt. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of want to talk about the mindset of that, of how I do that. Um, but the reality of that, Chris, is I don't actually want to set an appointment time with them. Typically what I'll do is if I knock on the door and say, now's not a good time and it truly isn't a good time, I'll say, okay, no problem. At all. As you can see, I got all these other families I got to get to today. 
um, in this week. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I'm going to try to take care of a few more of these families. And if I have time, I'm going to try to swing back in and to get you taken care of as I'm finishing up this, finishing up tonight. Okay. So if you do see Mr. Chris, if you do see any lights pulling your driveway or anything like that, and it's a little late, um, don't worry. It's just me. Okay. Um, but I'll see, I'll do what I can to try to fit you back in my schedule. Um, You're just finding out what times they are typically home. Correct. And you're work. you're going to work that into your schedule because it's so tight the best you can. Correct. Um, now, typically, if I do want to get an idea of when they think they're going to be available, but I will never agree to it. Like, it's like, oh, you know, come back after five, you know, or come back at 430, blah, blah, blah. It should be fine. Little Johnny's going to get picked up by his mom by then. OK, OK, OK. Looks like I can't do 430 because uh, I do have another appointment scheduled. But I tell you what, I might be able to do uh, 445 or I might be able to do somewhere around uh, 515. Um, you know, we'll try to try to fit you in there. And then they're like, okay, well, I got to make it work. I, I've missed my opportunity. You're, you're taking it away. Taking it yes. away every mm-hmm. single time. But even me pushing it back an extra 15 minutes, in their mind, it makes them feel as if this may only be 15 minutes. Because he obviously has appointment at 430, but he has availability at 445. He also has available at around 5, 515. These are quick appointments. These are quick things. He just needs yes. to give me my stuff, mm-hmm. needs to review some things. Um. So it allows me to be in control in a very nice way. And because they weren't available here, they need it now. It gives me respect for them to respect my time. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, very, very similar in uh, the phone approach. Uh, One key thing here is elevating the value of your time Mm -hmm. um, and the opportunity to take away. Yes. um, Because people move towards things that move away from them. That's very, very important that you understand that. And if you're standing there and you're always available, I've heard agents say it on the phone, Mrs. Smith, you can call me. I'm available anytime you need me, anytime. You're just sitting and staring at the phone like your family's trying to get a hold of you. And you're like, no, Mrs. Smith may call. She might call. Please call, <laughs> right? It's uh, it's you, You've made yourself too available, even though we want to practice good customer service, but on this, on this introduction and, and being able to set an appointment if you have to, it's you have to move away from them. What does that communicate when you don't move away? Well, I mean, you're devaluing your opportunity, your time, um, that nobody really trusts you because you don't have any other clients to see, right? Like why is your schedule not like <laughs> I don't want up? the unbusy guy, right? You don't want to go to the yeah. doctor that has every appointment available for the next three months. Oh, heck no, man. No way. Yeah, yeah. I can do uh, 5, 5, 15, 6, 6, 15. Like, bam, their schedule's wide How open. How about this? you just tell me when you're ready? Yeah, not not good, not good. No. So on on the phone... On the first part of the phone call, we do like we would do an introduction, like, hey, Zach. Hey. Hey, Zach, it's Chris with Senior Benefits Services. It looks like a little while ago you had sent in a request for information about the state-backed final expense programs. I need to verify a couple of things here. I have uh, 123 Success Way as your address. Is that correct? Yes. That's okay, right. great. And I have your birth date as uh, 4-15-2020. Uh, Is that right? Wow, you're young. Is that right? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Zach, um, I'm going to need you to go ahead and grab a pen and paper so I can give you some important information. All right. Now, when I say that, you said something earlier. You said persistent, gentle, mm-hmm. persistent and gentle. Okay. Um, and one thing we have to go back to. Okay. We'll go back to it. But persistent and gentle. I The language I use is directive. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to sound like I've done this a thousand times. Yes. I don't care if it's your first time. You have to sound like you've done it a thousand times, like a doctor, like a nurse, mm-hmm. someone who's in charge, and I can gently direct them. Did I sound rude when I say, go ahead and That's grab That's the thing. Pen? Like, when you talk about directive, your natural thought when you hear that word, oh, he's a turd. Like, he's telling me what to do. He's bossy. He's it's controlling. It's not productive. He's rude, right? It's directive, right. just to be clear. Or <laughs> yes. persistent. You're thinking somebody's not giving up. They're right. nagging at me. They won't leave me alone. Like, it's like a gnat flying around. That's not true. Both of those can be very respectful. They can be very yes. gentle. But it's it's the interfeeling of that. You don't have to be frustrated and right. directive. Mm-hmm. You could be nice, respectful, gentle, listening, yeah. but directive. Yeah. So... Um, when I say it that way, generally, 
if they're home, they're going to grab a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. And that way I know that they're available. If they're not home, they won't be able to. If they're at their friend's house, they're at the laundromat or they're in the car and they're moving around. Then, then I know I'm going to have to uh, set up a time later. The other th- reason I like that statement, go ahead and grab a pen and paper. I've got some important information for you. It makes it feel like that's going to be that's going to be the information when I'm going to extend the call further in the conversation. Correct. So that's that's the important stuff. I do want to add something to that, and maybe it made me just think of it. But when when you are door knocking, when you are out there seeing families, we have to maintain this gentle control as right. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, in a lot of situations, that is kind of an oddball one. But let's say you have a husband and wife that's on a lead that you have that maybe uh, you have yeah. a lead that you're running that indicates both. Mm-hmm. Well, in a situation, obviously, we know there's a, probably a decision maker, but you need both of them in order to make a decision. Um, in that situation where one of them's home and the other one isn't, I'm not going to try to push forward and... Um, get to sit with one of them and move through a presentation, I will actually go over top and tell them, now we definitely need her to be here as well. So what I'm going to do is I got a bunch of other families I got to go get to and I like flash through my leads, but I'll, I'll, I'll be proactive in telling them I can't do this now. I need to set the appointment. I'll try to fit you back in yes. here. When would, when would be a good time that she'll actually Correct. be home? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do that, but I will make it same, same concept, but I'm going to step my B up and, and I'm, I'm making it seem as if I'm in control. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it without both right. of you here. But instead of just being like, oh, you know, well, oh, she's not here. Okay, that's fine. Well, we'll just go through it with you. Right. Correct. Because my time is valuable. My time is important. And they'll never transmit that information the way you did or not at all. Right. Never. They'll never have the conversation. You know what they'll say? The insurance they'll man stopped by and gave me some you prices. How much cover it is and the mm-hmm. price. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. And the clients typically don't know and they'll compare it to something they've seen on TV and they have no idea how it works. Right. Now, if somebody, one thing we haven't, we're, we, we've got about four minutes left. If somebody is saying that to you, like, I'll, I'll tell you what I say, like, Mrs. Jones, um, I'm, I'm not feeling well right now. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Jones. I, I'll tell you what. I know this is important to you. I have about 200 people that I have to get a hold of and get this information. Hang today. on, Chris. I know. It's crazy. Today? Today. Today. I've got 200 people that got to reach Santa out Claus? to Santa Claus? So I'll tell you what. Go ahead and grab that pen and paper. I'll give you the information. What you do with it is completely up to you, okay? Like I just, I'm directive and I move forward. I acknowledge the fact that I understand she's not feeling well, but I'm moving forward. And then she's going to say, son, I threw up three times today. Oh, I do not want to mess with you. You need to get your rest. I do have these other folks I need to, um, I'm, I'll be reaching out to. I do have some, possibly have some times tomorrow morning at 830 or in the evening yep. around seven o'clock. Now those, I can't promise you I'm going to reach back. I'll be able to, but I'm going to do my best to connect with you. Yeah. I always like to put it this way. Um, I like to change mindsets of people because mindset in this business is absolutely everything. My mindset on getting a sit, whether you're door knocking, whether you're phone calling, no matter what you're doing, pretend this. Every family that you actually sit with and open your presentation, you get paid $250. Okay. Now I did the math back in the day and based upon what it was, that's a, you know, you know, you, you got some or similar to that, but um, regardless, no, it was two hundred fifty dollars a door knock. I, I don't remember. Anyways, mm-hmm. I gotta go back and do the math on that. Yeah, it seemed low for a presentation. It de- definitely, mm-hmm. definitely, yeah. that is. Uh, I think it was an actual door knock or a phone call, right. which was crazy high. Um, but the goal here is, if your job, you were salary job for an insurance company, and your only goal was to get in the door or capture the audience on the phone, and to be able to start a presentation. You don't get paid any more for selling it or any more if they hang up right when you open the presentation. It, it doesn't matter. But that's what your job is. But you don't get a paycheck at all if they don't. Now think about that. Your only job, your only goal is to be able to sit down with them and do a presentation. How would you respond to these objections? Oh, yeah. Very differently. How would right? you respond? Because And th- that's the mindset. Again, we talked about segmenting the sales at the beginning of this mm-hmm. podcast. Let's accomplish this before we try to accomplish that. Like our right. goal isn't walking out with an app at this point. Our goal is step one, to accomplish that. 
Um, and when you can change your mindset to, oh, okay, perfect. All I got to do is, is get to sit with them. Then I'm going to push through. It's not that I'm not going to hear. I'm going to acknowledge what they're saying, but I'm not going to respond to exactly what they're saying. Yeah. Now's not a good time. Oh, no problem, Mr. Chris. This just takes a few minutes. Um, I'm going to get my stuff. I'll be right back and we'll get this taken care of, right? Um, it, but it's not a big deal. I don't, it doesn't bother Nothing's me. Nothing's a big deal yeah. unless you make it a big deal. Yeah, it's very similar to what you just yeah. said. You mm-hmm. said, hey, what you do with this is completely up to you. My mm-hmm. job is just to get you the information. Yeah. It's the same thing. Your job is just to get, get them the information and see if this program will even fit them. And you almost presented that you don't care if it fits them or not. It's not a big deal to you because they're looking for that emotional reaction. They're yeah. looking for you to go, oh, uh, uh, well, I, I really need to get you sure. You sure? I really need to mm-hmm. get this information to you. Are you sure? And the reality is it's, it's not. If you act like you don't care, hey, and it feels as if they're just passing up on a great opportunity, then again, you're, you're pulling it away and you feel like they're going to be missing out. Let me let me uh, say one other thing that about this specific, we'll say, objection. To me, this isn't even an objection. Not mm-hmm. a good time. I'm not feeling well. It appears as an objection, but what it is is a complaint. And complaints are not objections. Mm, so, say it again, Chris. Yeah. So what I've what I've learned that hit me like I can't remember when I was doing sets. Like uh, you know, it's almost like somebody who's. Uh, recently had a surgery going through rehab, you know, they're saying, uh, Hey, you need to do your, your, uh, physical therapy. And you're like, man, I don't, I don't want to do my physical therapy today. And the, the, the doctor's like, well, you need to, it's good for you. Okay. I'll do my physical therapy. It, it's like barely a push even. Mm-hmm. And that's those, those two statements. An objection is not a complaint. Nothing's a big deal unless you make it a big deal. Kind of go together mm-hmm. because if you just keep moving forward on those, just acknowledge it and move forward. Typically, you're gonna be able to at least get a sit in a presentation, and you might get some sales as a result of it from yep. some sits and presentations you weren't getting before. You're extremely busy. This is very important. You have a ton of people that are reaching out, getting this, and trying to get this in place. Um, you know, to get these programs qualified for their family. Yeah. Um, you have almost more people to see than you have time for, and you want to get them their special time that you allocated for them. If they miss out on it, you're going to do your best to try to do them an extra favor to fit them in. Yes, very good. That's the mindset. That's the energy you come in with. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our absolute goal: is is creating that. Um, that importance at the door in a nice, gentle, directive, persistent way. Yeah, I think that's good. If you have questions, you have comments, we would love to see them on the YouTube machine. You can post them below. Oh, and of course, guys, if you're getting value from this, like and subscribe, and we'll even do you a favor. You can share this. We'll even let you share this. We're not even going to charge you for it for free. So share it. Thank you guys. We hope this has brought you value. We can't wait to see you on the next Life Insurance Academy podcast.